the condom promotion overshadowed the abstinence. So much so that our voice was not being heard. The condom posters were everywhere in the cities, in the towns, in the countryside. Now coming with abstinence, many people looked at it as a more unrealistic uh, uh, undertaking. So the biggest obstacle that we've met has been uh, the condom promotion group, which tend to overshadow the abstinence. We don't uh, promote the usage of condoms because we are preaching this thing of abstinence. Uh, the youth must not engage themselves in sexual activities before they get married. So the problem is, I can say, is a challenge because we do have this thing from Love Life, which are promoting the usage of condom. No one had ever come out against a condom that it doesn't help or it doesn't hack HIV. But, you know, years went by and the, the, the number or the, the percentages of the incidence of the virus in Uganda was not going down until of late in the late 90s, around 1998 up to, up to the present, when uh, the, this abstinence strategy has been boosted with a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, people have given this support from the government, from the uh, religious organizations, until of late when this support has come in. And now in these few years from 1997, 98 up to the present, the prevalence has gone very down, very low, up to around 6%. And yet in 1990, I mean 1986, it was around 30%. So we are, we, are, we are looking at it this way, logically, sincerely. Since 1986, people have been using condoms. Nothing has worked. How about now when abstinence has been given a lot of power, a lot of pressure, and now the change is on? I went in 2002 to Uganda to learn from the Ugandan experience in itself, how they were getting about promoting the program. And I realized that the incidence of HIV and AIDS went down drastically in Uganda because they were promoting the behavior and attitude change program, Education for Life, not only in churches but also in schools. We had massive awareness campaigns that reached in all the secondary schools, primary schools and communities, not forgetting the cultural leaders. Come to me, all you who are thirsty, and I will refresh you. I need more for everyone. And when I came back, what we decided at the beginning was that anybody who was to go into the youth apostolate must first be workshopped in education for life, because the the purpose of the program really is to return many young people to a value-based life. We, we are here in the valley of Njelele. The mission is called Njelele Mission. So we started uh, with 15 uh, caregivers. We have also an awareness program, a team of six persons who are going uh, each day in the primary school and the secondary schools in the valley. They are allowed by the government, by the education department, to present our point of view as Catholic. So each day from half past seven until half past two, there are going uh, in the schools where they are invited by the principals. They have a TV and some uh, videos and they go like that. In the awareness program, so they have the Education for Life program. They have Adventure Unlimited program for the kids from 8 to 12 years old. And also we organize three camps, Love Matters camp. So that as a church we commit ourselves in uh, this big struggle, this big uh, battle against HIV AIDS. So with Education for Life, we are encouraging behavior change, that it is possible for a young person to live without engaging him or herself in sexual activities. 
which when we start this program with a group of, children, of young people, then they don't really believe in what we are saying. But after we have done a session with them, they come to realize that well, it is true that uh, abstinence is only solution. In our country, we are in a situation where one groups come in today and they talk to them about you don't have to wait, you can just be safe. And here we are, we come in as Education for Life and we're saying to this same very young person, you know you can, you can do this, it's upon you, you're in control of your own feelings. Um, you do with yourself, with your life, with your body, only what is right at the time that is right with responsibility and being able to be able to, to be accountable for actions that I take. And I think it can be very confusing for young people deciding now which way do I go. And that is where I think we fail our young people because we give them too many conflicting messages as well. So we try to, to help them understand that the best prevention for them is not to be involved at all in any sexual relationship. Of, of, of any kind, just to, to say no to that. We emphasize the, the, the aspect of freedom, that it is within themselves that they can protect themselves. Freedom does not mean doing what I want, when I want, where I want. Um, that is just, I don't know what that is defining, but freedom has, comes with responsibility, it comes with accountability. They have to be able to say no to their friends, they're able to say no to, to drinking at a young age because when they get involved in that, they, they lose their sense of responsibility. And then to say no to the pressures of their friends to hold want them to be involved in any kind of relationship that may jeopardize their future. You know what? You know what? <laughs> Chalumbek has been interviewed in the community. Oh, oh you're too <laughs> You're disgusting, but you are not disgusting me. The stuff is here. Mm. But the way you are, you are disgusting. Uh, uh, just look at me. Yeah. I am a very new person, you know. <laughs> you guys, I'm just here to tell you that I'm from the rehab center. Rehab center? Yeah, do you know what? What is the rehab center? What are you doing? Then what is the use? Changing us there. Changing guys. No. Change, change, change your own life. Changing, 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 changing. I was just here to give you this message that okay. you have to change. Wow. From the rehab center, they told me that drugs are no good. Ah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Oh, that's you know fine. This, wait, wait, if you want to continue wait. like wait. that, that's fine. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. Mama's baby, show this guy a way out. Guys, let show him a way out. Chip eight. Chip eight. Chip eight. Guys, guys, guys. The instant coffee culture is very much with us also in the rural area and many of our young people are confronted with choices each day of their lives. I had to wait for Sunday to get the best cooked meal and so on, whereas today in this culture it's every day whatever, you know, you get what you want. Everything has to happen now, now, today. So this program has just come in handy to help many young people to make not only choices, life-giving choices, but informed choices. The information that we are giving the children is the information that even their parents, they usually give them that kind of information that they must abstain, stay away from sex and be faithful. So mm. the, the issue is that they need the help, the, the ongoing uh, uh, help 